Hello everyone, today we're doing a video on Mikola and Saint Trina. I hope you're all having a great day. Before we start, there's just a bit of a serious and important topic I need to talk about with you all, but um, I understand that some people won't want to listen to that, so I have put a timestamp where you can skip to the end of the intro. Something that you may or may not know is that I suffer with quite bad mental health. I have severe OCD and uh, autism. My OCD has been the worst. I can hardly do a lot of things and um, the mental health people in the UK have decided now that I am um, so unwell that they think I need to um, go to a clinic to get better. I don't want to go and I know that the kind of thing that they want to do in there is going to be no different than the stuff they've tried to do outside of it but it's out of my control now they're gonna if I don't consent to it they'll um, drag me out of my own home so if I spontaneously just start not uploading for a few weeks I just wanted to let you all know why and to truly and utterly say sorry. I also wanted to say thank you to Ayn Run. I, I'm sorry if I've not pronounced your name right, but um, you gave me a massive shout out on Twitch and all my life. It absolutely it boosted our subscribers. 21 subscribers, amazing. So I can't help but say thank you so much and that makes me so, so happy. Anyway, enough of this depressing talk. Let's get into the video, everyone. I hope you all enjoy. In the Elden Ring lore, Mikola and Saint Trina are some of the most important characters in the whole entire lore. The first bit we get about Mikola is in this item description. Radagon's Rings of Light, one of the incantations of the Golden Order fundamentalists, a gift of gratitude to the young Mikola from his father Radagon, produces a golden ring of light and fires it across a wide area, charging and enhances range. And yet, the young Mikola abandoned fundamentalism, for it could do nothing to treat Melania as a cursed rot. This was the beginning of unallied gold. A few questions are bound to arise from this item description. For one, why does Mikola call Radagon his father? And two, what is unallied gold? What are the origins of Melania's a cursed rot? Why did Mikola leave the Golden Order fundamentalists? To answer the first question, the reason Mikola calls him father is because he is his father. Radagon and Marika birthed Melania and Mikola. With the unity between Radagon and Marika, Radagon became the second Elden Lord, the first being Godfrey. The reason why these two children were so special, the reason why they became Imperians, was the fact that both Radagon and Marika were the same person. They were two sides of the same coin. And because they were both gods, this led to the both children, Mikla and Melania, becoming Imperians, and later in life they would ascend to godhood, like Melania does in her second phase, becoming the goddess of rot. And eventually, so will Mikla once he escapes his cocoon. And believe me, Mikla is still very much alive, even being drowned in the accursed blood Moog provides. He's very much still alive, even being held captive inside his cocoon by Moog, waiting for his ascension. Now to answer the second question, what is an allied gold? We find out more about this inside of Mikola's Needle. Sorry for the quality of the picture, I edit on PlayStation so I couldn't get a very good picture of the actual item description, as I don't have it in game at the moment. It states, one of the unalloyed golden needles that Mikola crafted to ward away the meddling of the outer gods, capable of subduing the flame of frenzy if inherited, allowing one to cheat fate and avoid becoming the Lord of Frenzied Flame. However, the needle is as yet unfinished and it can only be used in the heart of the storm, beyond time and said to be found in Faram Azula. This item description holds a lot, a lot of important details. One of the most important details is talking about unalloyed gold. It states in here that the unalloyed gold was created to ward off the meddling of the outer gods, something that Mikola is very aware of, but if we go back to the rings of light that we talked about earlier, it states that unalloyed gold was created to cure Melania's scarlet rot. Maybe the rot wasn't born with her, but she was cursed. Some things do hint to the fact that the rot is an outer god. Maybe this was Mikola's way 
of curing her sister's rot because we know we know from so many item descriptions that the one thing Mikola holds above everything else in the world is his sister. There's a good chance you're wondering, what did Mikola and Melania do after they abandoned the Golden Order? Well, what they did was, well what Mikola did was, was he sought to build his own Erd Tree, to build his own order, and so, in his first step, he built a home. He built a home for those that were forsaken by the Golden Order, the Misbegotten, the Omens, the Albanorix, all of those things gained a home, gained a place in the world. And this home, the Halig Tree, was very special indeed. For this home, this tree, the Halig Tree, was an Erd Tree offspring, a minor Erd Tree. We know this by the fact that a rotted Erd Tree avatar is inside the Halig tree, something that is only present when an Erd tree offspring is present as well. Even more proof is that it exactly says that in the wake of the shattering, the Erd tree avatars arrived to protect the Erd tree's offsprings. While Mikola was a kind and generous leader, that did not mean that the way to get to this magnificent Halig tree was easy. Ones that wanted to go there would have to venture through the dangerous and dense consecrated snow fields. One of these people that ventured there was the Albanorix, the second generation. The one that led the Albanorix is one that we face in game, Loretta, Knight of the Halig Tree. The Bewitching Branch item description though brings into question his intentions. It states, Tree Branch blessed with an incantation of unallowed gold, craftable item pierce a foe using FP to turn them into temporary allies. The Empyrean Mikola is loved by many people, indeed he has learned very well how to compel such affection. While I do believe that Mikola did honestly care and he was an honest to God kind person, I do believe there were some instances where his talent and his incantations of the unallowed gold were used to manipulate people's affection and feelings like said above. Well, for you, on screen. <laughs> but then there are item descriptions like this one, the next one that I'm going to show, like the Halig Tree Soldier Ashes, which sort of show the loyalty that they have. Whether this is fake loyalty or not is unknown. It states, Ash and remains in which spirit yet dwell, used to summon the spirits of four Halig Tree soldiers, spirits of common soldiers who carry the sacred light. When weakened, they explode to deliver a last-ditch attack. This was the bitter revelation discovered by the desperate soldiers who await the return of their lord to the rotted Halig tree. May the flash of our deaths guide Mikola's return. Maybe the flash of Melania's death will bring Mikola home and bring him out of his slumber. For it is like I said, there is nothing more in the world that Mikola loves more than Melania. So, when we take her away from him, He's bound to have a grudge. Saint Trina is bound to have a grudge. Maybe this is the plot of the DLC. Maybe Mikola is seeking revenge. Something that I stupidly failed to mention was the fact that when Melania and Mikola were born in the way they were, Melania and Mikola were cursed. Melania with the curse of rot, which further leads to the implication of it being an outer god, and Mikola with eternal youth. As you can see in the video, well, what you're watching in the background video bit, that is Mikola and Melania hugging. And you can see Mikola in his eternal child form. Before we continue, I just wanted to say, if you are enjoying the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. If you're not enjoying the video, then please let me know why so I can improve for the next video. That's about it. I'll let you get on with the video now. You might be wondering, after quite a bit of talking about Mikola, who is Saint Trina? I believe Saint Trina and Mikola are both the same person. One, in cut content, Saint Trina was the god of sleep and slumber. And, also in cut content, Mikola and Saint Trina were the same person. Also with how they are described, how both of their disappearances are utterly and weirdly familiar, as they are both the same, He's also, or she's, known, Saint Trina, as being a girl, a boy, a woman, so on and so forth. Saint Trina was a person of enormous faith, 
And with this faith and with her arrival, she brought forth techniques of dreams and sleep that would subdue almost any enemy. To add a bit more evidence to my claims, the Sword of St. Trina states, Silver sword carried by clerics of St. Trina inflicts sleep ailment upon foes. St. Trina is a mysterious figure. Some say she is a young girl, others say are sure he's a boy. The only certainty is that their appearance was as sudden as their disappearance. Another thing that might connect Mikola to St. Trina is the Trina's lily and the Mikola's lily. I'll read out the item description. A light purple water lily that is on the verge of wilting, material used for crafting items, exceedingly rare to find. A symbol of faith in St. Trina dulls the senses, preventing agitation. And if you look closely, the Mikola's lily looks almost identical, minus the wilting and the different colour palette. Perhaps this is a sign. Saint Trina used this as a symbol of her faith, while Mikola used this as, well, his favourite flower in his youth. Well, not his eternal youth, but his childhood. That's just speculation, but it is what I believe. Sadly everyone, that is all the information we have about Mikola and Saint Trina. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Like I said at the beginning of the video, um, if I don't upload randomly, then that's why. Um, if you wish more information, just go watch the intro that I've marked. If I did spread any misinformation in the video, please let me know as well so I can improve and so I can change it for the next video. That's been all everyone. I hope you all have a great day and I'm wishing you the best. Some of our other lore videos are in, should be popping up on screen now. So yeah everyone, I'll see you guys in the next one. May you all find your worth in the waking world.